This is an ABC News special report. Farewell to Pope Benedict. Now reporting live from the Vatican, George Stephanopoulos. And good morning from Rome, where today Benedict XVI is saying his final goodbyes as Pope. It's a moment weighted with emotion and history. The first Pope to resign in almost 600 years. And yesterday, the Pope, in his final public remarks, spoke in remarkably personal terms about the joys and burdens of being Pope. In just a few hours, a helicopter is going to take off from behind me in St. Peter's Basilica here, take the Pope on a short 15-minute helicopter ride to Castel Gandolfo, his summer residence. And at 8 p.m. Rome time, his resignation will take effect. The Swiss guards who protect the Pope will stand down, and Benedict will begin life as Pope Emeritus, in his words, hidden to the world. But right now, he is saying his final goodbyes to the cardinals. So we want to take you to the Clementine Hall of the Apostolic Palace, where the Pope just walked in. We see him right there greeting the princes of the church, the men who will choose his successor. Right now, we're hearing the Dean of the College of Cardinals, Angela Sodano, welcome the Pope to this gathering and thank him for his service. Let's listen. In St. Peter's Square, beloved and venerated successor of Peter, it's we who need to thank you for the example that you gave us over the past eight years of pontificate. On April 19th, 2005, you became part of a long chain of successors of Peter the Apostle, and today, February 28, 2013, you are about to leave us, waiting for the helm of, boats, of the boat of Peter to be handed over to someone else. This way, the apostolic succession will continue, the succession that the Lord promised to his holy church until we will hear the voice of the angel of the apocalypse proclaiming, there is no more time, God's mystery has been executed. At that point, the history of the church will end together with the history of the world, with the advent of new heavens and a new world. Holy Father, with profound love, we've always tried to accompany you in your path, reliving the experience of Emma's disciples, who, after walking with Jesus for much of his path, said to one another, wasn't our our heart burning when he was speaking to us along the path. Yes, Holy Father, please know that our heart was burning too when we were walking with you over the past eight years. Today, once again, we want to express to you all our gratitude. All together, we are repeating an expression typical of your beloved native country, Fergus God. May the Lord reward you. A thank you from the Cardinals for the Pope they chose eight years ago. You see Dean Sedano hugging the Pope right there. I'm joined here by Father John Walk, a Vatican expert who teaches at the Pontifical University of Holy Cross here in Rome, you saw Dean Sedano talk about the mystery going on here and also the history. Every cardinal in that room is aware of how historic this decision by the Pope is. Every transfer of authority in the life of the church is a historic moment, but we're living through truly an amazing and unique moment in the life of the Catholic Church right now. The Pope speaking now. Let's listen again. I want to thank Cardinal Sodano, who, as always, can express the feelings of the whole 
college, college before everybody thank you from my heart and I would like to say in reference to the experience of the disciples of Emmaus also for me it was a joy to walk with you over the past few years in the light of the presence of the Lord as I said yesterday before, th before thousands of faithful faithfuls who filled St. Peter Square your proximity, your advice were of great help in my ministry during the past eight years we lived with faith very beautiful moments of radiant light in the church together with also some clouds in the sky we tried to serve Christ and his church with a deep and total love which is at the, the soul of our ministry we gave hope which comes from Christ the one who can the, who is the only one who can enlighten our path we can thank the Lord who allowed us to grow in the communion and together we pray him to help you to grow even more in this profound unity so that, that the college, college of Cardinals is like an orchestra where the diversity of the expressions of the Universal Church may become one in harmony. I would like to let you have one very simple thought that is very dear to me, a thought about the Church and its mystery, which represents to all of us the rationality and the passion of life. I'll use an expression by Romano Guardini, written in the year of the Vat Vatican Council number two, which, when he published a book with a, a special dedication to me, so the words of his book are very dear to me. The Church is not an institution that was built around a table, but it's a living reality. It lives a long time in the becoming of a living being, changing, and it's in its nature it always remains the same. The heart is Christ. It was our experience yesterday, I believe, in the square, to see that the Church is a living body filled with the Holy Spirit and it lives with the strength from God. It is in the world, but it's not of the world. It belongs to Christ, the Lord, the Spirit, as we saw yesterday. So it's true and eloquent, the other expression of Guardini, the Church awakens in the souls. The Church lives, grows, and reawakens in the souls just like the Virgin Mary received the word of the Lord and conceived it in the work of the Holy Spirit. And the souls in the humility become capable of generating Christ today in the world. Through the Church and the, myst the mystery of the Incarnation, the mystery of the Incarnation remains present forever. Christ continues to walk through time and everywhere. Let's remain united, dear brothers, in this mystery, in prayer, especially in the daily Eucharist, and that's how we can serve the Church and the whole humankind. This is our joy that no one can take away from us. Before to personally say goodbye to you, I would like to say that I will continue to be close to you with my prayers, especially over the next few days, so that you may be full of the action of the Holy Spirit in the election of the new Pope. May the Lord show you what he wants from you. Among you, there is the future Pope to whom today I promise my unconditional reverence and obedience. For all this, with a lot of affection, I want to give you my apostolic blessing. Pope Benedict XVI with a final blessing for his cardinals.
We return the blessing with a standing ovation. Sit nomen Domini Benedictum. Adiutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. The Pope will now greet each cardinal personally in order of seniority. And as he does that, I want to bring in John Thavis, a veteran Vatican journalist, also the author of a new book, The Vatican Diaries. The Pope's meditation there on the living reality of the church, always growing, always changing, but remaining true to Christ. And John, uh, as he talks about a living church, we have to reflect on how this act of resignation will actually change the church and affect these cardinals who will choose a successor. Right, I think we saw today that Pope Benedict is seeking to reassure Catholics on, on two things. One, he may be changing the office of the papacy in a dramatic way, but he's reassuring them that he is not changing the core values of the Catholic Church, and that the Church can adapt without necessarily losing its way. I think it still remains to be seen how the role of a retired Pope will actually function, but the Pope gave a second clear indication when he said in the plainest language possible that I give my unconditional reverence and obedience to my successor. There is certainly not going to be a question in Pope Benedict's mind about uh, split allegiance among Catholics in the future. And certainly sending the signal, Cokie Roberts, our own Vatican expert, and your mother, of course, served as ambassador to the Vatican, that he will not interfere with the choice of this next pope. But we have to remember, of the 115 or so cardinals who will actually vote uh, for the next pope, this pope has appointed more than half of them, so he does have an influence in that respect. Absolutely. More than the 57% have been appointed by him. So that not only means that they have a certain allegiance to him, but they've also never been in a conclave before. And so they are now in this position of trying to figure out who a new pope will be, probably for life, although perhaps uh, Benedict has set a precedent by resigning, uh, which will not only affect the billion and a half Catholics in the world, but it will affect them personally and their jobs. And so it's, it's daunting. And uh, Cardinal Sodano started his uh, farewell by saying it is with trepidation uh, that we say come to this moment. And I, that's what I'm feeling here at the Vatican uh, today and yesterday, George, is trepidation. Real sense of this has never happened before and we're not at all sure it's a good thing. And Terry Moran, this has to be a terrifying choice for those cardinals because they know, even as Pope Benedict sets down, that this has been a time of some trouble for the church, dealing with the sexual abuse scandals for the last several years, with different problems of corruption inside the Vatican uh, as well. And as these cardinals try to take those very practical cons considerations uh, into mind, they also want to stay open to what they consider their true job, trying to discern what God wants in this choice. Absolutely. You've described the, the, this moment of, of near crisis, really, for the church, this unprecedented resignation, those troubles that you speak of and their need to rely on, on their, their faith. I'm struck by the drama of it all. Here's, here's Benedict XVI, uh, almost a man presiding over his own funeral. Uh, kind of like Tom Sawyer, only one better, <clears throat> because he gets to he gets to be there in an active role and, and speak to not the mourners here, but those who are saying farewell. And I've been struck over the past couple days here in St. Peter's Square and here with the Cardinals at the affection that is shown this man. He had such a hard act to follow. Pope John Paul II, one of the most charismatic men of the 20th century, and, and here Cardinal Ratzinger, as he was, came in as you know, uh, Pope Ratzi, the enforcer, and I think the key word that he wanted to leave in his papacy was love. Uh, that, that, that tough line, he believes, comes from the love as he understands it, uh, that is at the heart of the Christian faith. And I think he's just hoping that as they go forward to choose the next pope, they can, they can use some of that. <laughs> and finally, Father John Walk, that affection only seemed to increase uh, in response to the humble way 
in which Pope Benedict is leaving. I think we've seen an incredible outpouring of, of sympathy, affection, uh, and gratitude and appreciation in these last few days. Everyone realizes that Benedict has given his life, all of his, his final years, to the service of the church. And it's an, a sacrifice that people really have appreciated.